Word has some shapes you can insert into your document. By coming up here, clicking on the Insert tab in the Illustrations group, there you go, Shapes. Click on it, and let's do something simple like a line. Click on the line, move your mouse back over the document, and you get a black cross. That means it's in drawing mode. Just go ahead and click and drag to draw a line. Let go, and there you go. With it selected, you can see you get the related contextual format tab, all the different features that you can use to help you work with your shape, you know, the different colors and effects. In any case, with the selected, if I'm like, eh, I don't like the size of it, I want to make it shorter or longer, well, let's say I click off of it and I'm like, oops, let me go ahead and make it shorter, then just hover over it until you can see a four-way arrow, click on it to select it. Not only to select it, but also with the four-way arrow, it means you can move it in four different directions. When you click on it, you can move it up, down, left, or right. There you go. So, with it selected, you get the resizing handles, these circles. Hover over, like the bottom right-hand corner, until you can see arrows pointing in opposite directions. Then click and drag to move it in, swing it around, change the slope, and let go. Or, if you want to keep the slope the same, like I'm guessing this is maybe 25 degrees, go ahead and hold down the Shift key, then click on the resizing handle, and if you go down or up, notice how it doesn't change the slope so the line doesn't swing with the mouse, but it keeps it at the same slope, so it just goes in or out. Go ahead and let go of the mouse, then the shift key, and of course you've got your shape styles, so if you want to change the color, click on shape outline, choose a fancy color, and then click on it again if you want to change the weight, like make it thicker. Six point is the max, so if you want to go more than six point, click on more lines, opens up the task pane, and then go ahead in the dial box. You can go ahead and spin up or spin down, and you can type it in like 10 points or, well, make it super thick. Well, there you go, 1,584 points. That's a lot of points. You can also change the color here. You can say that you want something gradient or even no line. We'll keep it as is and close out. Underneath that, you got shape effects, shadows, glows, and we'll do a glow, maybe something like 5-point gray accent color 3. Click on that. Nice little glow there. You also have shape styles. You can hover over that to get a preview of it. Subtle line accent 2. Select that. In any case, there you go. That's the line. If you want to go ahead and draw additional shapes, you don't have to come over here and click on the Insert tab if you already have a shape selected because you get the related contextual format tab because on that tab, you also have Insert Shapes. Just click on that. Now, of all the shapes, I want to focus on the circle and the square. But guess what? There is no circle or square. What's that? Well, yeah, you only have something that's close to it, like for the square, the rectangle, and for the circle, the oval. Let's take them one at a time. First off, if we want to draw a square, select the rectangle, click on that, and then you get the black cross, go ahead and click and drag, and if you're really good, you can kind of gauge how that looks. There's your square. Of course, if you go too far to the right, you get a horizontal rectangle as opposed to a vertical. But if you really want a square and you don't want to take a guess at it, hold down the shift key and it pops it open. Let's go ahead and let go of the mouse, then let go of the shift key. And that's your square. Same thing when it comes to drawing a circle. Well, with the shape selected, I can come back up here, click on shapes again. So to draw a circle, we have to select the oval. Click on oval. And get the black cross, then go ahead and click and drag. And if you go too far down, you get an oval vertically or horizontally. You can try to eyeball it or just hold down the shift key to pop it open. There you go. Let go. Beautiful. Now let's go ahead and give it some color for these things. They're looking kind of bland. With the circle selected, let's click on more. Yeah, okay, orange, that's fine. Select that. Let's go ahead and select the square. Click on more. It may be something subtle effect, blue accent 5. Let's go ahead and select the circle. And then with my four-way arrow, click and drag it, move it over into the center. About thus, let go. Now when it comes to resizing, we talked about it. And of course, you also have your rotation handle and also how you can flip your objects. We talked all about that in an earlier training video on modifying your pictures or images. And that applies the same when it comes to shapes, text boxes objects, so you want to watch that training video. But here, with shapes, you can add text to it. You can do it one of two ways. You can either right-click on it, 
and come up and say you want to add text or with the shape selected just start typing and it will add your text fabulous and you can also format the text you know select it mini formatting toolbar change the couleur of it maybe make it something ooh, purple that might be okie dokie now with text on the inside of the shape that's one thing if you have text on the outside of the shape as you recall in earlier training videos when it comes to your images or objects or text boxes pull quotes you get your layout options you can click on so if there's text within your document you can see that the shape when it comes to text is going to be in front of the text so the shape when it's been drawn at least with this circle is going to sit on top of the text if you want it to be square with the text so the text wraps around that shape as you can see there and then go ahead and select it and we covered that in an earlier training video but there's a refresher and it's available for your shapes let's go ahead and click off now notice the shapes are stacked you've got the circle then the square then the line now that's called layering meaning that you've got one layer on top of another and you've got a total of three shapes so three layers and what shape is the first layer well the one on top followed by second then the third how does word identify which shape is going to be the first layer the one that's most recently drawn so since the first drawn was the line after I draw the square that becomes the second the square becomes the first and then when I draw the circle that becomes the first that becomes the second the square and then the line is the third so if you want to go ahead and reorder that so let's say that the line when I click on it and drag it is let's say on the second layer between the circle and the square and you can see it's selected how do I bring it up well you can do it one of a couple of ways you can with it selected come up here on the related contextual format tab and click on the forward option and you can see when you hover over it, it brings the selected object forward one level or one layer so it's hidden behind fewer objects click on the drop down arrow or you can bring it to the front and you can see when you hover over it, it brings the selected object in front of all other objects so if you have 20 objects when you select this it brings it right to the front it becomes the first layer or just bring in front of text so as opposed to what let's go ahead and click on the layout option it's in front of the text well that's where it's at bring in front of the text it's already selected so let's go ahead and bring it forward one and now you can see it's layer number two it's behind the circle yet in front of the square so let's go ahead and say that we want to send it back well instead of bringing it forward there you go you can send it back and so what's the difference between backward and clicking on the drop down arrow and send to back well send to back as it says in the pop-up sends it behind all other objects so it's the very last layer or you can do it one level or one layer at a time so if I send it backward now it's behind the square and so I can go ahead and say instead of bringing it forward just bring it right to the front and now it's on top of the other two layers what if I go ahead and I select the circle here and another way of doing this is right clicking on it because in the shortcut menu you get your send to back and bring to front you can do it there so let's go ahead and send it to the back all the way to the back and I'm like oh all I can see is the selection of it if I click off well how do I bring it to the front because I want to keep everything there I just don't want to have to click and drag and move it and then you know select that and say okay bring it to the front then click and drag and move that back because as far as my positioning goes um, I want it perfect I don't want to be off by just a little bit I mean you could go ahead and get your positioning coordinates down by well with the selected object come up here on the format tab click on position and go to more layer options and then you get your positioning absolute position 1.55 inches to the right of this column and absolute position 0.62 below the paragraph Ugh. I mean you can do that or without moving it to be able to pull the circle to a layer that's in front of the square there's a couple things you can do you can hit the tab key and as you hit it it will go through each shape well starting with the first one that you have selected to the next shape so tab 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 and if you've got a lot of shapes and you hit tab and you're like oops I went too far now I have to keep tabbing all the way through no just hold down the shift key and hit tab and it goes backwards so shift tab to go back tab to go forwards so let's do shift tab until I can see the outline of the circle 
well, which is a square, but remember it's a circle inside of the selection of the square, the resizing handles for that circle. And once you have it, and then you can come up here on the Format tab and say Bring Forward, and there you go. Now you can do it that way, or let's go ahead and hit Undo. You can come up here on the Format tab to the Range Group and bring open the Selection Pane. And it says it'll see a list of all your objects. Click on it, and there's all the objects. There's the oval, there's the rectangle, there's the straight connector, or the line. And in fact, if you want to go ahead and hide one, so you can work with the one behind it, like the rectangle, just go ahead and click on that all-seeing eye. So you poke it in the eye, and it has to close. And then you can go ahead and work with it and change the color and go, oh, you know what, I think we ought to do something. Oh, yellow is nice. There you go. Okay, we're done with you. Let's go ahead and poke you in the eye again to open it back up so we can see the rectangle. Now, in addition to that, you can also change the layer here by using your up or down arrows. So if you want the oval, well, we drew a circle. By default, it's called the oval. You want that to be in front of the rectangle. With it selected, go ahead and hit the up arrow. And there you go. That way, I think it's a lot easier than using the tab key to tab through all that. But nonetheless, there's a couple ways to go about doing this. You may find one for your situation works a lot easier than the other. And then, of course, don't forget, you can hide all, work with your text, whatever you need to do. And then click Show All. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.